For their third album, Vampire Weekend had a clear objective in mind, be fresh and new or die. And so, Modern Vampires of the City was born out of a rigorous voyage of experimentation, with the aim to make a record that sounded like nothing fans had heard before. Opting to work with an external co-producer for the first time, the band landed on Ariel Rekscheid, whose considerable rap sheet includes the likes of Haim, Usher, Madonna and Adele. Alongside the band's own producer, multi-instrumentalist and sonic mastermind Rostam Batmanglij, he helped shape what is Vampire Weekend's most polished and impressive piece of work to date. The production of Modern Vampires was more sophisticated than the band had executed before, thanks in part to both producers investing in brand new, specked out MacBook Pros for the sessions. The duo also had the inspired idea to mirror their hard drives with the same software and plugins, allowing for seamless long-distance collaboration between Rekshide's LA studio and Bat Manglage's Brooklyn apartment. The writing process for the album was relatively slow. In lieu of jamming as a band, a year's worth of experimental writing and recording went into the album's creation, much of which was either in solitude or with only two or so band members being involved. This fragmentation was reflected in the recording locations, which included Batmanglage's apartment, a cottage on a small island in Massachusetts, a granny flat behind Rekshide's house, and two LA studios, Rekshide's own space, Slow Death, and the famed Vox Studios. In fact, Vampire Weekend's rhythm section of bassist Chris Bayo and drummer Chris Thompson only really emerged in the latter parts of the songwriting process, bringing to life Batmanglage's programmed ideas making them something that was more Vampire Weekend. As Batman Glitch remembers, the scattered recording process imparted a variegated quality to the album, which has been a hallmark of the Vampire Weekend sound from the very beginning. In honour of this aesthetic, the band tried to cover every era of recording to create a sort of caricature album. They made the most of Vox's vintage tape machines to record the album's drums and bass often running them through an Ampex mic preamp from the 60s. These recordings were then digitally edited out the wazoo with plugins in Pro Tools and Ableton Live. As for guitars, Batmanglage often recorded direct into his UA Apollo, with a plethora of plugins used to shape the sound. Universal Audio's ATR-102 mastering tape recorder plugin was an instrumental player here, which, with its wows and flutters, proved key in crafting the vintage sounds that Batmanglage heard in his head. Arguably even more essential than the recording itself was the co-producer's extensive editing of arrangements afterwards. According to Rekscheid, a vital step of the process was assessing whether anything sounded too familiar, in which case they would throw it away and start over from scratch. A great example of this is on Step, in which the pitch of the drums was manipulated by slowing them down, imparting a muffled, ethereal quality. A similar technique was used on the Congos in Everlasting Arms, which were pitched up during tracking, making them sound a little like water droplets hitting a steel basin. The vocals too were given their fair share of pitch treatment, a technique the band had begun to explore on 2010's Contra. The aim was simply to make them sound more interesting and weird on tracks like Step, Diane Young and Yahe. Ableton's format tool and Antara's auto-tune were vital here, allowing Ezra Koenig's vocals to be altered at every pitch. Above all though, Batmanglage was concerned with warmth of sound on modern vampires of the city, making use of a Sonics Oxford suppressor plugin for meticulously monitoring and controlling harsh frequencies. The band also reviewed mixes on a range of headphones to rule out any possibility of painful listening, an exhaustive process overall, which Batmanglage has ranted at length about in the past. What do you think of Vampire Weekend's experimental third album? Let us know in the comments below.